Have you heard about agent-to-agent -agent collaboration in Microsoft Copilot Studio, but don't know what it's about? Well, stay tuned because in this episode, Sadeep here is going to talk to us about it. Welcome back to the Low Code Revolution Show. I'm Eliza, I'm a senior cloud advocate, and today we have one of our Microsoft MVP, Sadeep here, who is going to talk to us today about agent-to-agent -agent collaboration in Microsoft Copilot Studio. I'm now gonna hand it over to Sadeep, who's going to introduce himself. Welcome to the show, Sadeep. Thanks, Eliza. And, uh... Good morning, everyone, or good evening, based on wherever you are. Uh, I live in New Zealand, and I work for Theta as a practice lead. Uh, I'm also an MVP in business applications and M365. And like Eliza said, uh, I'm going to talk on the new multi-agent communication in Copilot Studio. So before I begin, uh, I'll first clarify the difference between a bot and an agent because people tend to use the terms interchangeably. We are all used to uh, using bots on websites and I think of them more like a front desk receptionist. They follow a fixed script, they greet visitors, take messages, answer FAQs. But if you ask them to do something outside their script, they either can't respond or have to pass on to someone else. An agent, on the other hand, uh, understands the big picture and it can break it down into small steps. And they also know which colleagues or in this context, what other agents to involve when they need to involve them. We will now uh, look at some of the key features of an agent. Uh, I'll be building an agent using Copilot Studio. So the terms I use are in are specific in that context. So you can think of training an agent much like uh, training a new employee. Uh, first, they need good instructions and they need to know what they are supposed to do and what they're not supposed to do. Uh, secondly, they need tools, uh, just like how you would provide tools to an employee, say a laptop or a phone. Similarly, you have to provide tools to your agent. Third, the agent in some cases might have access to a knowledge base. Uh, this is where they can go back and check information before taking any action. Uh, and fourth, they are usually triggered by an action. Uh, so something has to happen uh, in order to set them in motion. And finally, a new preview feature in Copilot Studio that I'll be talking about today uh, lets the agents talk to one another. The use case I'll be presenting today is of a staff recruitment process. So let's imagine the main person driving this process is the recruiter. Now the recruiter doesn't work alone. They probably loop in an HR executive uh, to get the offer letter sorted. They might raise a ticket with IT to arrange a laptop. And they could also go and ask a uh, office admin to check if there's a accommodation available for the new hires first couple of weeks. So today we can certainly build the recruitment process using existing automation tools and applicant tracking systems. Uh, but the catch is that in a conventional automation, uh, each stage of the recruitment process usually runs as its own separate workflow. And these workflows don't really talk to each other. And we often rely on complex integrations uh, or some manual tweaks. Uh, the other challenge is that traditional automation is built on uh, fixed and predefined logic. So if something changes, uh, say a candidate needs a slightly different onboarding path, we have to actually go in and manually update those rules. And finally, uh, there are issues of data formats. So passing information from one stage to another uh, often relies on uh, APIs and often require strict data formats. So if the format changes for some reason, uh, these integrations break. So now, welcome to the agentic world. 
the tasks are handled by specialized AI agents and each agent is expert in one single area. So there's no super agents, so to say. The real power comes from how these agents collaborate and pass information between one another. So I'll be using the following setup for the demo. Uh, I am using a SharePoint list as a central repository for applicant records. And this list contains uh, information such as applicant names, their information, contact information, uh, dates, statuses, and all that. I'm using a Dataverse table to maintain a list of company assets, uh, primarily the laptops and the phones and all that. And uh, I have another Dataverse table uh, that is being used to track communication between the agents so that I can see what's going on. So now comes the fun part, the part of creating the agent itself. Uh, the first agent is the recruitment agent, uh, which is the main actor in our scenario. So it is supposed to coordinate the entire hiring journey and it will interact with all other agents. Uh, as you can see, it's been given very clear instructions on who to call uh, or when to call them. Uh, each conversation uh, it has with other agents is logged in Dataverse for auditing. And to do that, it has been given a Dataverse tool. If you have worked in Power Automate before, you'll, uh, you'll rec recognize these tools. These are just actions within a flow. And finally, the trigger. So the recruitment agent springs into action when an item in the SharePoint recruitment list is updated. So in our case, the list shown in the previous slide serves as the trigger. Uh, this is how the same view looks inside of Copilot Studio. So the agent will use the Dataverse tool to insert a row in the Dataverse. Uh, the agent will be triggered when the item in the list is modified. And the list of agents are provided here, uh, the ones it can uh, go and talk to. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, uh, clearly articulated instructions is a must. Uh, as you can see, these instructions can be provided in natural language, uh, mentioning the tools and agents that uh, I have configured before. Uh, for Gen AI to work, you have to have the orchestration enabled in the agent. And title and descriptions are quite important because when you're working with AI agents, uh, the agents, the other agents need to know what this agent is capable of. Here's my offer letter agent. Uh, uh, it, it has three instructions. The one highlighted in yellow is its primary job. Uh, the other two invite are simply logging the conversation between the agents. So when it's time to generate an offer letter, this agent is going to call a Power Automate flow. And that's the reason I have equipped it with two tools, uh, one to trigger the flow and the other to insert a row into Dataverse. I mentioned earlier that the offer letter agent uses a flow to generate a document. So from tools tab, you can simply look for the flow and add it to the agent. Uh, one thing you have to keep in mind is that the flow needs to be in the same Power Platform environment. You'll notice that I haven't mapped the flow input fields. Uh, I am letting AI work it out for me. And AI does that uh, based on the instructions that uh, I have provided in the description field. This is the third agent uh, that shows the hotel availability. And this one has access to a knowledge base to do its job. Uh, and it has also been given a tool, which is send an email tool. It enables it to send email to the applicant. And the final agent is my service desk agent. Uh, it looks for a device that is unallocated, and then it goes and assigns that device to the new hire. And for that, it has been given two tools, one to read uh, data from Dataverse, and the other one to write the data into Dataverse. Now for the demonstration, 
uh, I have built a power app that helps me initiate the hiring process uh, to track the device allocation and also to track the agent to agent conversations. So we are starting in our Power Apps application. Uh, the app, as you can see, is directly connected to a SharePoint list and that holds all our potential candidates. Uh, on the left, you have a link to view all the available assets. Uh, as you can see, some of these devices are unallocated and uh, some of these are uh, already allocated to other people. Uh, the bot conversations is uh, currently empty, but it will get populated during the demo. So let's go and hire a candidate. And uh, for today, what we are going to do is we'll hire Sudeep as the practice lead uh, based out of Christchurch. And now let's go to the Copilot Studio interface. Uh, the item update action in SharePoint has uh, set our recruitment agent into action. And as you can see that it now goes through the instructions that it has been given. So it is now speaking to the offer letter generator agent. And the flow is able to extract all that information from the natural language information that was given to it that you can see on the right hand side. And it has done its job. It has generated the offer letter and it passes it back to the recruitment assistant saying that I have completed my job. And that's the message uh, that it has sent that the offer letter has been already sent. It moves on to the office admin assistant. It's looking for hotel availability in Christchurch from the date of joining. Uh, it has come up with some options. The options have been uh, emailed to the applicant. There comes the email. And now it's going to the service desk uh, helper which is looking for unallocated device so it's it has found a device it has allocated to uh, Sudeep and with that as you can see the orchestration is complete and now if we go back to our power app and we'll just refresh the data sources uh, first we'll go and see the bot conversations you can see for auditability I've just been logging all that conversation and uh, you can see how the bots interact with each other and that might help you to improve the instructions if you see there's a communication gap uh, it, you'll see that uh, it has sent those emails as well and it has assigned a laptop which is 13098 so if you go to available devices you see that the device has been allocated to the new person to the new hire if we look at the uh, offer letter that was generated, Flow used a, a template that was been provided to it, and it has just used filled those placeholders with the information uh, that the assistant had passed on to it. And you can also see that it has uh, sent the list of hotels that it could find in the area in in the Christchurch area around that time. So. What you just saw uh, is that how four simple agents coordinated between themselves uh, to build uh, such a complex process. And each agent uh, was simple in itself, but what uh, just by working together, uh, they make uh, it look like there's a super agent that is working in, in behind the scenes. Yes, Sadeep, I really liked how in the Canvas app, you have that visibility where the agents are communicating to each to each other, like servicing that up onto the Canvas app. I think that's really smart. Yeah, thanks. It's really thanks, cool. Thanks, Eliza. And uh, like I said, that it often helps uh, if you can find there's a communication gap, like the agent has not been able to communicate something properly to the other agent, that's when you know that you have to go and modify the instructions to make it uh, work better. Yeah, it, it's, it's really going to be helpful for iterative development right. when, as you say, you need to modify and make some changes to make it work better. Good. So just summarizing, uh, connecting other agents is still a preview feature. Uh, I'll share a link to this article in the video description. Uh, so I'll 
invite each one of you to go check it out. And that's all I have to share today. And thanks for having me on the show. Back to you, Eliza. Thanks, Sadeep. And I'm assuming that on this page, um, it will highlight some of the limitations yes, of- Yes, you're right. Yeah. Previous correct, videos. correct. There are some okay. limitations. For instance, uh, you can't connect to uh, an existing agent that's already connected to other agents. So there are some limitations like that. And again, it's it's preview at this stage, but uh, you can go and check out uh, this page to get more details about it. Thanks, Sadeep. Well, I'm sure all of our viewers have learned something new today with how agents can work together in Microsoft Copilot Studio. So thank you very much, Sadeep, for your time. And thank you everyone for tuning in to this episode of the Low Code Revolution Show. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.